Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. We're focusing right now on representing statistical data graphically. One of the methods that can be very useful uh, for representing data graphically is a circle graph, also known as a pie chart. Pie charts are especially useful if you are focusing on percentages rather than raw numbers. Let me switch cameras and show you what I'm talking about. Give me just a second. So this is an example of a circle graph or a pie chart. What it represents is the results of the 2012 Mississippi Republican primary. And this data was gotten from the CNN website. In that year, there were four candidates running for, uh, running for president as Republicans at the point the Mississippi uh, primary was held. These are their names. And as you can see, what the pie chart is showing is what percentage of the vote each one of these candidates got. It's all color coordinated. Rick Santorum is the blue area. He got 33% of the vote. Uh, Ron Paul is the yellow area. He got 4% and so forth. This pie chart was created using Excel. And in fact, any statistical software package will create a pie chart for you, no problem whatsoever. What I want to do in this video though, is show how we could create a pie chart by hand. Not that we will do that ordinarily when we want a pie chart, we'll just get some software and punch some buttons and get it right away. But creating this by hand will give us a sense of how these calculations are made and where these angles are gotten at. It is very plain to see that the percentages represent the area of the circle or, or pie that is taken. 33% is a much larger piece than 4%, as you can see. Whereas 33 and 32% look like about the same amount, pretty close. So let's go through this by hand with a different set of data and see what we can learn. So these are the results of the 2020 New Hampshire primary, uh, New Hampshire Democratic primary, as reported by NBC News. There were a whole lot of candidates running in this particular race. These were the top vote getters. First of all, there were a total of 298,477 votes. Bernie Sanders got 76,394. Pete Buttigieg came in second at 72,474. Amy Klobuchar at 58,832. Elizabeth Warren, Joe, Bar Joe Biden, excuse me, and about 15 or 20 other candidates shared the rest and we're just going to lump them all together. So looking at the numbers themselves, do definitely, you definitely get a sense of some candidates getting more than other candidates, but what is really useful is to be able to focus on the percentages. Let me move out, that out of the way. And so I wanna talk about that. So the first thing I wanna know is what percentage of the vote did each one of these candidates get? This is the total number of votes cast. And to get the percentage, what you do is you take your calculator, let me clear it out. And you take the number of votes that any individual candidate got, 76, uh, 394, and divide it by the total, 298,477. And you'll get a percentage. In this case, it's written as a decimal, 0 0.255946, 0193. Let's say that we're going to round, first of all, convert that to a percentage and round it off to one decimal place. That would be 25.6%. And so we'll write that right there in the chart. Pete Buttigieg got 72,474 votes. Let me clear this again. And we'll take 72,474 out of the total of 298,477. And that's gonna give me 0.2428, rounding that, converting to a decimal place and rounding to, converting to a percent and rounding that to one decimal place would give me 24.3%. 
easy to calculate the remainder of the percentages as well. 58,832 divided by 298,477. I did these calculations before I started the video. So let me just write these in. Amy, Amy Klobuchar got 19.7% of the vote. Elizabeth Warren got 9.2%. Joe Biden got 8.4%. And all the others, and again, there's like 15 of them or so, got 12.9%. Now, all of these percentages were rounded off as I went. So they should sum to 100%, um, but we don't need to be too worried if it doesn't quite add up because there is rounding. As it turns out, if you add up all these percentages, you get 100.1%, close enough. Now, what we want to do, going back to our diagram, in order to create a diagram like this, what we have to do is for each sector, figure out what the central angle is, what that angle is in the center of the circle. How are we going to get that? Well, we remember that if you measure in degrees all the way around the circle, that's 360 degrees. If, if Newt Gingrich got 32% of the vote, then we would like his region to represent 32% of the 360 degrees. That would be, take the 32%, make it back into a decimal. Of and multiplication, when you're talking about a percent or a fraction, or a fraction generally means multiply. So to get the angle measurement of that in a central angle, we would multiply 0 0.32 times 360. Let's do that with the data that we're looking at now so we can see how that would work. I'm gonna refocus this just briefly here. Okay, so Bernie Sanders got 25.6% of the vote. Out of 360 degrees, we would take the point 256 representing 25.6 percent and multiply it by 360 degrees and that would be this many degrees 92.16 degrees now we're going to measure our angles using a protractor and there's no way that you can be as accurate as 92.16 degrees so what we're going to really do is round everything off to the nearest degree that will introduce a little bit of round off error but hopefully not too bad. So Bernie Sanders got 25.6% of the vote. That would represent a 92 degree central angle when we create the pie chart in just a minute. We'll do the same for everyone. Pete Buttigieg, we're going to take 24.3%. So that's 0.243 for 24.3% times 360, 360 degrees around the circle. And his angle is 87.48 degrees. Again, rounding that out to the nearest, off to the nearest whole number, that's 87 degrees. Amy Klobuchar, 0.197, that's her percent, times 360 degrees. That gives me 70.92. That we will round up. So the central angle for her will be 71 degrees. Same calculation for the remainder. If you don't mind, I'm just going to write down the, the degree measures that I got when I did this a, little, a few minutes ago. That's 33 degrees for Elizabeth Warren, 30 degrees for Joe Biden, and 46 degrees for all the remaining candidates. This is the information that we need to create the pie chart or circle graph. If you're going to create a circle graph from hand by hand, the best thing to do is to start with a circle, drawn as carefully as you can, and also draw a line segment that reaches from the center of the circle out to the circle itself. That's going to give you a starting place to measure the angles that we're talking about. And I'll show you how you do this. So I'm going to take my protractor, and I'm going to start looking at the angles. Notice I copied them here. Uh, Sanders, Buttigieg, Klobuchar, Warren, Biden, and all the others. So I didn't have to refer back and forth all the time. 
Bernie Sanders uh, percentage, which was about 25.6%, represents a central, central angle of 92 degrees. This is a fairly simple protractor. There are other much fancier ones. The way this one will simply work is you'll take this hole in the center and center it over the center of the circle as best you can, lining up the horizontal line with the horizontal line that you drew. Zero degrees represent, is given by the number on the lower end of the semicircle, counting from 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Since we're measuring from zero, we want to focus on the lower set of numbers. The higher set of, num set of numbers starts with zero over here, and that's not what we want. So 92 degrees, just as being as accurate as we can, would put me right here. And then I'll draw a line segment joining that point I just plotted to the center of the circle. I'll only draw the portion that goes inside the circle so it doesn't look terrible. That's 92 degrees. 25.6% is about a quarter of the electorate. That looks about right. And as we go, we're going to label these regions with the names of the candidates, just so we can keep track of them. Now, how do you get the other angles? What you always want to take do is whatever uh, line segment you've just created, this is the technique I recommend at least, turn the graph so it becomes a horizontal line segment to the right, much like that originally drawn in line and measure from there. So starting with that is my new horizontal line. I locate the center and line up this side. And then I look for the angle, which is 87 degrees for the next candidate. 87, here's 80, 85, 87. Make a mark like that. Connect up the center of the circle with the point you just plotted almost going to look like you're creating a straight line. Oh, I didn't mean to go outside the circle, so pretend you don't see that. And who does that represent? Well, that's the, the, the angle for Pete Buttigieg, so we will put his name right there. Now, turn the diagram again so that the line you just drew becomes the horizontal line. Measure the next angle on the list, which is now upside down, but she can still see is 71 degrees. From there, so line that up with the center and that initial side and locate 71 degrees, which is going to be right here. It's kind of a little bit in the glare. Let's move that over a little bit. You can see it a little more clearly. Connect the center with this point, not going outside the circle this time. And then turn that back around so that we can label that region as the region that represents the votes for Amy Klobuchar. What do you do next? Whatever line you just drew, turn that so it becomes a horizontal line to the right. Use that as your start starting line in measuring the next angle which is 33 degrees. Oh, that's off the screen. Let me get where you can see it just for a minute, 33 degrees. So we'll measure from here, getting that center as close to the center of that little tiny circle as possible, lining up the initial side with the zero degrees on the protractor, and then locating 33 degrees, which would be right here. And of course, I know you realize that uh, we're, although I'm being as careful as I can, there's going to be a little bit of jiggling and so forth to where this is not going to be absolutely perfect. That is okay. We would have a computer graph it if we were interested in accuracy. We're interested in how, how this creature is created. This represents the votes of Elizabeth Warren.
the line you just created, turn that so it's horizontal and to the right. Look at the last angle, or not the last, the next angle on our list, which is for Joe Biden, 30 degrees. So we're going to put the center of the protractor right here. Line that up, find 30 degrees on our protractor, it's right there. Draw a line segment joining the center to that point, but staying within the circle and being as careful as we humanly can be. That region represents the votes for Joe Biden. Now, the fun thing is when you get down to the last region, you don't have to measure that one. It's going to be everything that's left. So this region here that's, that remains being the last data point would represent all of the other candidates. And so I will label that as all the others. Now, as a check, because you don't want this to be wildly wrong, you can measure that final angle and see if it really does look like the 46 degrees. So I'll do that by the line I just created, line that up, including the center, and then look and see what you have. And this to me looks like it goes right here. If I were to look at that super carefully, I think I might say it's 47 degrees. Um, that is pretty darn close. That is good enough. In fact, as it turns out, because all of those angles were rounded off to agree to a degree, to the nearest degree, they don't actually add up to 360 degrees anyway. They add up, as it turns out, out to 359. And so actually the fact that this was one degree greater was kind of a good thing. So that is how we create a circle graph or a pie chart by hand. Uh, this is basically what is going on in the inner machines of Excel when they are uh, drawing the graph uh, far more beautifully and quickly. But this is really great to get a good sense of how this works and how well, by the way, you really get a far better sense of the percentages of the graph, of the percentages of the votes that the different candidates got. This is actually, to me, far more visual than just these raw numbers here, as far as a sense of how did everyone do. So I hope that's very helpful, and thank you so much for joining me for this video.